That was season defining for Arsenal and Liverpool and the Premier League title race is firmly on. Arsenal smashed Liverpool really 3-1 in a game where Liverpool, I thought, were massive, massive favourites going into the game. And they've wheeled away with a huge, huge result for Mikel Arteta. There's no coincidence that the kind of celebrations at the Emirates were as jubilant as they were. Mikel Arteta was running down the touchline as if it was Mourinho knocking Man United out of the Champions League with Porto. It was kind of these huge celebrations at our Arsenal. And the overview from the game is that, yes, it, it doesn't surmount Arsenal above Liverpool. It doesn't really give them a huge advantage over Man City but it kept them alive in the Premier League title race. And how huge is that for Arsenal fans? So if you're an Arsenal fan in the comments, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We're going to comment about all the games. And obviously where this leaves both Arsenal and Liverpool. Very keen to what you think in the comments down below. Let's just start off with uh, what happened in the first half. Obviously Saka opens the scoring when Havertz has played through on goal. It, happens a f it happened a few times in the game where... The core of Liverpool, that kind of midfield, the McAllisters of the world and Van Dijk and Canate, they got exposed. And I think this Arsenal side that have always had good midfield, I've always thought they had a better midfield than Liverpool. I just question their front three at times for Arsenal. But Arsenal's front three were able to get space, get passes played through because of, I think, the porous nature of Liverpool's midfield today in particular. Uh, and McAllister, I don't think he's a defensive midfielder. He, at points, he was the deepest player in that Liverpool midfield, and it didn't work for it didn't work for Liverpool today. He wasn't able to break up play. He wasn't able to do enough, in my honest opinion. And obviously, Arsenal break through, and Havertz misses, and it's the miss that is so bad. The miss, it, it wasn't low through the keeper's legs. It wasn't a deflected kind of save where the keepers had to make an unbelievable save. He's hit it straight in the chest of uh, of Allison and. That's actually given a, a, a bounce back so pure to Saka. It's, it's such a strong bounce back. He's almost just hit. It's almost like hitting a wall. He hasn't even tried to go around the wall, and it's gone straight into Saka's feet with a, with a nice little finish. Obviously, tuck it away in an open net. At that point, Arsenal were completely on top. They were completely controlling the game. It is this classic narrative, and it's very similar to the Guardiola Jurgen Klopp narrative about what's more important: the kind of intensity or trying to keep the ball. And obviously Jurgen Klopp found a lot of success against Arsenal in the FA Cup this season, against Man City in previous seasons, where, yeah, it's nice to keep the ball and have a good midfield. Obviously, Jorginho is in midfield for Arsenal today. It's it's all well in, it's all well and good having this kind of nice tick attacker approach. But Liverpool's direct, you know, long ball approach at points has, has been able to kind of uh, 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 go right to the heart of the issue. But then if you can't control the game in midfield at the points where you need to, then possession does mount up and possession creates space with overloads and it, it moves people around. And that's what happened to Liverpool today. I think, I've not seen Van Dijk and Canate that exposed for quite a long time. Uh, and I think that's down to Arsenal's midfield. Obviously, Jorginho came in and you could definitely say it was a massive stroke for, Mar uh, for Marteta because I don't think he would... If, I, if, if you'd said to me eight weeks ago, four weeks ago, when, when Arsenal dropped points to West Ham and Fulham, you're going to play Jorginho in midfield against Liverpool and it's going to work. I, I would have questioned that. I really would have. But it's worked today. It really has. And it, it allowed Arsenal a bit more control. It allowed Declan Rice to push forward, bomb forward. We saw him creating big chances in that regard. He gave it off to Saka in the second half, I think it was, by bombing on in midfield. So he's got a little bit more license to do that. When Thomas Partey is back, I think that would be a huge uh, thing for Declan Rice as well. But Jorginho brought control that I don't think McAllister had today. Uh, Graven Birch, I can see why he's not started for Liverpool in, in a lot of these big games. Uh, he's, he wasn't bad today. He's a technically very, very gifted player. I like him a lot. But um, Ryan Graven Birch, did he get on the ball enough? Were Liverpool's patterns of play good enough to control the game at the Emirates? It's hard. It's an away day. I'm not blaming uh, Liverpool. I think they've been fantastic this season. But this is, this is against an Arsenal side that are very nuanced. They're very technically gifted. If they show a lack of fight, a lack of desire at points, especially last season, then we can talk about that in a different video. But what they definitely are is a technically gifted midfield, a technically powerful midfield. And Liverpool were not able to get uh, their foot on the ball, in my opinion, today. Uh, then the craziest thing happened. It was the most Arsenal thing ever where I thought they were going to sail to a 1-0 lead at halftime. And just before that, uh, Diaz gets a little chip ball over the top. Uh, and the keeper, uh, I don't know what he's doing, uh, doesn't come out for the ball. Uh, and I think it is Gabriel and Saliba get a little bit mixed up. And Saliba in particular doesn't quite clear it. Uh, he should be lumping it 
if if at worst he should be a little bit stronger to Diaz. I know Diaz has got a little bit of momentum on his side and he's running at full pace, but Saliba should be holding off that challenge, in my honest opinion. Um, and that would be a little bit uh, frustrating because there's a lot of Saliba fans out there. He wasn't on it in that regard today. Uh, but apart from that, he had a good performance, what can I say? So in the second half, this is so crucial for Arsenal because you're looking at it and you're thinking... This could be a 2-1 Liverpool win quite easily, I think, with Nunes coming on and Andy Robertson came on and Harvey Elliott to control the game. That's what Liverpool were gearing up to. They were gearing up to winning the game in the final 20 minutes. There's no question about it. They thought they could win the game. They were looking to win the game. The amount of space that Liverpool exposed themselves to uh, would allude to this idea that I think Liverpool went there to try and get maximum points and crush Arsenal's title hopes. I've talked about it with Robbie Lyle on the channel, how important it was for Arsenal to win this game. And they've done that. They did it against City at home. They've done it against uh, Liverpool at home. Absolutely huge. But they had to get that second goal of the game to really get themselves in it. It's a huge, you know, of all the second goals scored by Arsenal in the last few years. I mean, it's so big. Uh, obviously, Martinelli. Uh, Arsenal have ridden their luck. If you ask any of the great athletes, any of the great football teams in world football, do you need to get a little bit lucky to win a league title, to win a Champions League? The, ov the, ov the obvious answer is yes. Sometimes you see that in April. Sometimes you see that in May. We've seen it a few times now for Arsenal. They got lucky with Alisson making an absolute blunder. And Alisson made a mistake against Man City. So I've seen it a few times. But uh, the mistake from, from Alisson and Van Dijk allows Martinelli with a tap in. Um, and it's the kind of luck that Arsenal deserve, I think, on some level. Because the ball over the top was good. And they hurried and, and hassled the Liverpool bat line massively. Um, but ultimately... You know, it's so poor from Liverpool. It's so poor defensively. It's so unlike Virgil van Dijk. It's so unlike Alisson. Um, you got to look at it and think uh, Arsenal, Arsenal have been a little bit lucky there. Um, but they've, they've deserved their luck. So I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy. Um, the goal that really surprised me is the third goal. Because I think Arsenal were struggling to control the game. And they just said, F it. Let's just go and have a shot. Let's, let's try and get a few shots off on goal. We saw a, a long-range effort. I can't remember from who from. But... Leandro so Trossard, Leand Leandro Trossard um, gets an opportunity left foot, narrow. He doesn't know what to do with it. We saw Havertz five minutes before try and do that, open his body up, and there's a penalty claim. Trossard gets it through the legs. It was deflected off Virgil van Dijk. And, Vir and Virgil van Dijk and Alisson will leave London going back up to Liverpool thinking they've had some of the worst performances that collectively they've had in a very, very, very long time for Liverpool, especially this season. So Arsenal rode their luck. But then Arsenal capitalised by making it 3-1. Arsenal won the game against Liverpool 3-1. It's got huge repercussions for their belief going into the remainder of the season. It's got huge repercussions for making the Premier League title race flat. There's only a few points between Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool. Um, some standouts for... Uh, we'll do some standouts from, from both sides. And if you made it this far, make sure you subscribe. would really uh, appreciate that. Um, th there will be some standouts for me in terms of the midfield for Arsenal. I think Odegaard is probably the worst midfielder for Arsenal today. I think Jorginho, Declan Rice controlled the game very, very well. But it's the front three. Now, Havertz didn't have a good game. I I, I was doing the, the club obviously live. I had I had my hands, my head in my hands because I was so frustrated with what was happening with, with Kai Havertz. His shooting is so poor. He's so lackluster. His decision making to whip the ball in. But he did on some level, there was some sort of reaction because Saka was better in this game and he was good against Forrest as well. Obviously scored in that game as well. And Martinelli, so Havertz has initiated both Martinelli on the left and Saka on the right scoring goals, which is um, interesting. Uh, and it means that Martinelli and Saka are back to the kind of goal scoring form they have been in the last few weeks that we criticised them for about a month ago at the start of the new year for saying that they've been a little bit lackluster. Now they're adding goals to their game. They looked a lot quicker. Martinelli was cooking Trent at points in this game. Um, and uh, getting to the byline and whipping things in look far more dangerous than he has in recent weeks. So it's a huge result in that regard for Mick Arteta because I think he's got Saka back. There will be a bit of uh, and Martinelli, but the issue will be, of course, Saka got injured. And how will Arsenal be able to maintain form without Bukayo Saka, who's been a mainstay in this Arsenal side? Um, let's talk about Liverpool. Again, I talked about the midfield being a little bit lackluster, but in these kind of games where... You don't have a, a left footer playing at left back. Uh, you don't have a, or, or obviously a centre back playing at left back. They lacked a little bit of uh, dynamism going forward from Joe Gomez. Uh, Diaz, electric, obviously scored a goal, but 
does he do enough? I think the team selection from... He, he does enough in most games, don't get me wrong, but did he do enough today? I don't know. I think the team selection was wrong. I think you caused a lot of fear in this Arsenal side, especially in the match-going fans at the stadium. Darwin Nunes over Gap. I think Gap was a safer pair of hands. He links play up a little bit better. Had a chance to go five yards wide. He had one chance, and Nunes is going to have those chances as well. I, For me, my gut is like... Nunes makes this game a lot harder for Arsenal to win 3-1, in my opinion. Um, and I think he's got the energy. He came on, he caused havoc. He had this shot that went for went to into a different galaxy uh, near post. So Jota, Diaz and Nunes in this game causes terror uh, in the front line. I know Klopp has got a lot of decisions to make about Mohamed Salah coming back and they've got to rotate players and rest players. But Gakpo, for me, didn't strike enough fear into an Arsenal side that have clearly been wounded. They've been wounded in these kind of games with Liverpool in the Premier League before. And they've been wounded against Liverpool in the FA Cup in the same fixture, in the same stadium, only a few weeks prior. So you're looking at it, you're thinking, Nunes was good in recent weeks. He was good against Chelsea. Why not kind of keep that momentum going on some level um, and, and see if we can cause havoc in the first 50, 60 minutes of the game and then bring on Gakpo if you're in a winning position. But uh, Liverpool never were in a winning position. And that'll be frustrating to Jurgen Klopp. Does this have a, uh, any sort of question mark for Jurgen Klopp's tenure at Liverpool in terms of, um, not to say anyone down tools, but it's hard when you lose games like this. Canate got sent off and it looked like the side, I'm not, again, I would never say Liverpool are lack, uh, you know, lacking because of an, a lack of effort, but the way that the way that Canate got sent off, it would be a huge miss for Liverpool in the next couple of games. It was a little bit silly. They can't really appeal it because it's the second yellow, I think it was. It, it adds a lot of pressure and it, it just felt that Liverpool today lacked control. Obviously, again, I've talked about the midfield, but even the back line, the way they, they linked up play, Arsenal were always on the, the, the front foot. Arsenal found a weakness in terms of Liverpool's ability to control football matches. I saw Thiago Alcantara on the bench. That wasn't a, a kind of a, a option for Jurgen Klopp, obviously, today to start. But Liverpool, if they're going to win the league, they're going to have to get a lot better in midfield, in my opinion. They obviously massively missed Dominic Zaboslai as well. So that's just my reaction to the game. I think Liverpool would be really disappointed with how they conceded three today. Uh, lack of control in midfield and Arsenal. I mean, they got their front two back at least. And with Jesus injured, Havertz at least initiated a reaction out of other people. Maybe that's always good for. Because he was, I thought he was absolutely shocking today. Um, but Arsenal were superb. They absolutely were. They deserved it a million percent. Very keen to what you think in the comments down below. If you've watched this far, make sure you subscribe. Obviously, be covering all the football that's coming on in the next week or so, and I'll see you very, very soon.